Hi, my name is Kelsey with Nayana Yoga, and today's yoga sequence is going to be how to release your loss, or if you're feeling a little bit sad or depressed, this is a great one for you. If you don't need it right now, make sure you save it and use it for when you do need it. And let's get started. To start, we're going to be in mountain pose. To come into mountain pose, you want to keep your feet about hip width apart. You're going to lift your toes up, spread them, and then press them in one at a time. And then you can close your eyes, feel your sense of balance. You might feel yourself swaying a little bit, and that's okay. Just try to become centered. Ground down through your feet. If you feel your weight is in the heels, then start to rock forward slightly into the balls of your feet. Lengthen through your spine. Let your shoulders melt away from your ears. Reach up through the crown of your head. Taking a deep breath through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. One more breath, just like that. Exhale through the mouth. You can bring your hands to your heart. See if you can start to clear the mind. We're just focusing on the practice right now, letting go of anything else. Go ahead and open your eyes. We're gonna inhale, reach up. Exhale, we're gonna fold forward into Uttanasana. This is uh, also known as ragdoll pose. You can grab your elbows and then gently sway from side to side. Place your right hand down. Inhale, look up. Exhale, come down. We're switching hands. Inhale, look up. Exhale, come down. You can grab the backs of your calves slightly and pull yourself in. When you're doing this, you're reaching the belly button towards the back, towards the fronts of your legs. And then remember to rotate forward into the balls of your feet. Deep breath. And exhale. We're going to bend the knees and roll up vertebrae by vertebrae with the head being the very last thing to come up. And now you want to make sure that you have your props ready. Um, you want to have one block on each side. We're going to go into half moon or Ardha Chandrasana. Uh, I like to keep a couple stacked bolsters, but if you have couch cushions or firm pillows, you can do the same thing. Um, I've prepped them in advance so you can uh, tighten two straps on each side or use a belt, whatever you have at home. Uh, I also have a couple of towels for later on. And if you'd like, you can have a small chair and maybe even a rose quartz crystal for some work we'll do at the very end of this class. Uh, that said, let's go ahead and step out. Grab your block. We're going to move over to your left side first. I'm mirroring you. You're going to have that on the outside of your front foot. That's your left foot. You're going to turn that left foot out so you can have your foot parallel with the edges of your mat. We're going to bend the knees. Bend your left knee. Keep your right leg straight. And we're going to come down into Warrior Two, Virabhadrasana Two. And then you can straighten out. Lean out to the side. Grab that block. This is when you can start to uh, bend that left knee, hop up a little bit, make sure you have enough room. I had a kitty cat on my mat, so I was making room for her. Go ahead and come up into half moon. You can keep your hand on your hip, or you can start to take that right arm up toward the ceiling. This pose is nice because it works on the Ajna Chakra. The Ajna Chakra is important for right understanding intuition, balance, taking some deep breaths, go ahead and bend that left knee, reach back out for the mat, come up into Virabhadrasana 2. When you sink down, you can widen the stance a little bit and then make sure that the knee is stacked directly over that ankle. Inhale, come up. We're going to move to the other side. So now both feet are going to be pointed toward the front. 
turn in that back foot slightly. Now your right foot is gonna turn all the way out. Make sure you have the block ready for you on this side. So it's gonna be on the outside towards your pinky toe. You're more than welcome to cup your hand on the mat instead of using a block. But I feel like this is a nice thing to do, especially when you're not feeling like doing much movement. It's nice to use props in those instances. So again, we're in the position for Virabhadrasana 2. This is warrior pose. Take your arms out to the sides. Start to bend that right leg. Keep a 90 degree angle. Then inhale, come up. Exhale, you're reaching out to the side. Then down for your block. Hop up. And we'll come into our Ardha Chandrasana 2 on this side. And again, you can keep your hand on your hip or start to take it all the way up toward the ceiling. And then you can bend that leg. And we'll come back into Virabhadrasana 2. Come all the way up. Toes pointed toward the front. We're going to heel toe it in. So once you've narrowed your stance a little bit more, you're going to keep the toes pointed straight ahead. We're going into Prasarata Padottanasana. So this is the standing forward fold. Inhale, come up with the hands. Exhale, we're going to come forward, keeping your back straight. You're reaching forward all the way down. Start to walk the hands in between your legs. Press your palms into the mat. Press your torso deeper in between the legs. And start to walk the hands back out. Place your right hand underneath your chin. Inhale, come up with that left hand. Deep breath. And exhale. We're going to switch. Left hand on the ground. Inhale with the right hand. And exhale, go ahead and lower that back down. Again, walk your hands in between your legs. Start to shift your weight from the heels into the balls of your feet. Lift the tailbone up toward the ceiling. Deep breath. And exhale. Let's start to walk the feet in until they're about hip width apart or slightly wider. We're gonna sit back down into malasana or a yogi squat. You're gonna have your elbows on the insides of your knees, alternate pressing them in to one leg at a time. So you're gonna alternate pressing your elbows into your knees one at a time. And then place your hands behind you and we'll sit back down on the ground. Okay, so from here, we're gonna cross our ankles. We're gonna roll up onto our knees. We're gonna face the sides, and then you can go ahead and come into cat-cow. So this is cow, you're gonna inhale, look up at the ceiling. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale, look up. Exhale into Marjoriyasana or cat pose. Inhale, look up. Exhale into cat. Come back into a neutral spine. You're gonna tuck your toes under and we'll come into downward facing dog. This is Adho Mukho Svanasana. It's a tongue twister for me. So from downward facing dog, we're gonna come down to our knees for a moment. And we're gonna to prep to come into some Salamba Shurshasana. That means a headstand. This is contraindicated if you're pregnant because it can cause your baby to flip over and become breech. Um, it is also contraindicated if you have any spinal issues, hypertension, uh, vertigo. So just be careful with those conditions. The reason why we do it though is because it helps to relieve stress, fatigue, um, it brings oxygen to the brain. It helps to activate the pituitary gland. It's supposed to balance your hormones. Um, so for that reason, I really like this pose. If you are unfamiliar with doing this, it's maybe nice to go into a class where you can have an instructor help to put you in this pose for the first time. Or if you wanna try it on your own, I would suggest being next to a chair that's on a mat um, where you can rest your feet 
uh, or, and you would have that chair where your head is facing, um, or you can be against a wall. Uh, that way you're not gonna fall backwards. If you do start to fall and you're in the center of the room, then what you do is you tuck your chin to your chest and you roll. That's a safe way of getting out of this. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with our headstand. You're going to interlace the fingers, place it behind your head, and then instead of keeping your elbows out, because you'll lose your center of gravity, you have um, less of a support system because it's one plane rather than keeping the elbows in and creating a tripod, uh, you wanna make sure that you have the elbows in. That'll just help support you. So to get into this, rest on your elbows, interlace the hands behind your head, and tuck your toes. We're gonna rise up. And you can start to walk the toes in. This might be a good starting place. You can also lift one leg up at a time. Maybe this is all you do, and that's great. And then eventually what you can do is start to tuck the knees in, float them up, and then start to, to straighten the legs. Or you can start to keep the legs straight and then shift back towards your head and then lift the legs all the way up. So we're gonna stay here for a little while, take a deep breaths. you're ready to come down you can come down with control either one leg at a time bent legs and then open the knees slightly we're going to come into balasana child's pose rest your forehead on the ground you can rock from side to side A good counter pose for this is to come into cat cow. So rise up onto your knees, inhale. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale. And exhale. One more. And exhale. We're gonna cross the ankles and sit back. And now we're gonna move into shoulder stand. So while Shirshasana is the king of all asanas, it's said that Sarvangasana, um, or shoulder stand, is the queen of all asanas for much of the same reasons um, that we mentioned before. This one's also good for the Vishuddhi chakra, which is your throat chakra. And that helps with right understanding. For this one, you might want to have a towel that goes underneath your neck just for a little bit extra support. It's nice also to have a chair that's rested on a mat so it doesn't slip out. And then you can rest your feet on that if they start to come over. Otherwise, you're gonna start to take your legs up. You shift your hips up. You're gonna prop them up with your hands and then start to walk your hands up your back towards your head. And to come out, you're gonna let your hips slowly roll all the way down to the ground. You're gonna move down one vertebrae at a time. And we're gonna move into Setu Bandhu Sarvangasana, which is bridge pose, but we're gonna use our props. We're gonna use those bolsters. So go ahead and grab your stacked bolsters.
and you're going to lay your legs on that first bolster, your torso is going to be laying on that second bolster, and only your shoulders and your head are going to come off. So this is a nice supported bridge pose. If you like cushioning for your head, you can have that. Um, your towel's ready. to release any mental chatter. Just focus on the sensations in your body. You can expand the chest by grabbing your elbows and letting your um, arms hang over your head. like to stay in this pose a little bit longer feel free to pause the video and stay as long as you'd like otherwise place your feet on the ground you can lift your hips and take the bolster out from underneath you and we'll rise up so once you're back in your seated position we're going to cross the ankles we'll sit all the way back and the reason why I have this prop here is because we're going to be leaning forward over the stacked bolsters and resting our arms on it. So if you have a small chair, that's great. Um, stack of books, you name it, use your imagination. Or if the, the bolsters are sufficient, that's fine too. Um, one thing I like to advise people is if you start to sink back, it's nice to get some height. You can sit on a block and then lean forward. So let's go ahead and do that. Once you have your bolsters on your lap, you're going to inhale, reach the arms up toward the ceiling. Exhale, reach forward, rest your arms and your forehead. If you'd like, you can even grab a towel, roll that up, rest your forehead on it. This is Paschimottanasana, or a seated forward fold. start to rise up, inhale, exhale, float the arms down, and now we're going to come into Shavasana. So take that block out from underneath you. If you're using two bolsters for your Shavasana, then you want to have the top one overlapping a little bit so that way you're in a gradual slope. I'm also going to grab my two blocks and have one on each side for my forearms to rest on. And then if you have a rose quartz, you can grab a rose quartz and you're going to place that right on your heart. <laughs> I think I scared the kitty cat away. <laughs> Let's go ahead and lay all the way back down. Place the rose quartz on your chest. You can also hold it in your palm if that's easier. Remember your ujjayi breath. So constrict the throat slightly. 
Breathe in and out through the nose. We'll just do that initially before we finally relax in Shavasana. Try to count 10 seconds in, 10 seconds out. You can also come into the chin, chin mudra. So you have the thumb and the index finger um, in a circle and the rest of the fingers are outstretched facing the sky. The thumb represents the universe and the index finger represents yourself. So this represents your inner connectedness with the world. And then with the palms up, it means you're open to receiving the knowledge, your energy. Continue with that ujjayi breath. Do a few more rounds. You can lay all the way down on the ground, um, but we're going to come all the way into Shavasana, so you can breathe naturally, let the feet roll out to the sides, palms are facing the ceiling. Soften the calves and the knees and the thighs, let your hips become heavy. Soften the belly, let the chest sink into those bolsters behind you, feel supported by the bolsters and the ground beneath you. Soften the throat. Let everything go. If your mind starts to wander, you can start to visualize the color pink. You can start to think the mantra yum, which is the mantra for the heart chakra or anahata chakra. Then eventually let it go, bring it back to your breath until you're only focusing on the sensations in your body. Feel free to pause the video here and relax in Shavasana. And that concludes our video. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out the link below and subscribe to the Yoga Plus app. See you next time. for 14 and 30 day programs, hour long classes, and much more on our yoga app, Yoga Plus by Psyche Truth. It's free to download and features a variety of wellness content, including yoga, fitness, Pilates, guided meditations, and interviews with dozens of wellness experts.